Hi and welcome to Prime Sports with Matlatsi. In this episode, we are coming to you from Cape Town in the mother city. We are visiting former Kaiser Chiefs, Orlando Pirates and Ayas Cape Town coach Mohsin Etruga. Let's check him out. Coach, um, thank you very much for, for, for joining us. Uh, we felt that uh, since uh, we are here in Cape Town, as a prime sports with Maslatsi, let's touch base with you. I uh, got the tip that you are back in town and I said, okay, let's, uh, let's go speak to the coach. But uh, I want to start um, this interview on a sad note. Um, recently, you are a former player, one of the, the players that you, you sort of helped um, <coughs> as a young kid. Like Marcelo Sala passed away, and uh, you know, under very, very distressful circumstances. Um, how did you feel when you you heard the news and you heard that he passed on like that? Yeah, first I must say that uh, thank you for, invi for the invitation. Thank you so it's always much. great uh, to be back in South Africa and uh, speaking about um, South African football. But um, now, firstly, we're uh, lucky. Yeah, uh, I spoke to Peter Dutoy immediately after that, so when I heard that, um, tried to find me out what, what happened. And, um, <coughs> and the story that came up was a, b a bit sad. Yeah. And obviously I stated in the Twitter account, in the Twitter, how I felt in that moment. And um, obviously a player that I really was, uh, was, was close to me, last year they had, uh, when the 50 year of Kaza Chief happened, mm -hmm. uh, all the boys get together and they sent me all together. And Lucky was the initiator of that, uh, sent me from all players together, mm -hmm. together with Isaac Mobutza, the picture of my former players that we had so much success together. <coughs> and uh, uh, that was the last touch that I had with him. Yeah. And after that, uh, we, we, we have tried to help him in, in certain ways before, with some managers and then some football uh, people outside the country. Uh, to your question, obviously, it's, it's like uh, we lost a son. Uh, mm -hmm. and, um, I didn't have the last years a bit that um, connection to him and um, it, uh, sometimes you've been so busy in, in the world, football world, there are so many players that uh, sometimes that they're asking for certain helps but uh, lucky kept the distance a bit. Um, obviously we lost a little bit the touch to each other but it, I felt uh, very sad mm -hmm. and after that we thought about the, the, the last couple of years that he must have gone through and this is actually sad that uh, players from this quality that has done so much in, in football can end up uh, like like uh, how uh, the sad story what happened to him. Yeah. And uh, I mean that team, uh, I remember there was that uh, Kaiser Chiefs Rao Academy, uh, <laughs> that, uh, you, yes. know, you were there at the time. Yeah. Some very, very, very good players came out of that system and you know, sitting here now, I mean, you know, many, many years ago, you look back and, they, uh, you know, there is that sense of sadness that none of those players actually went on to become big stars and they had the potential to become big stars. Yeah, this is, uh, we, this will take hours and ta maybe uh, days to talk about that. It will be episodes because um, I'm, I came in the country here in 99 and mm -hmm. um, uh, since then, 99 involved a couple of years, went out internationally, come back again, uh, went out, come back again. So, been pr practically involved since 99 in South African football. Mm. And um, uh, obviously, I had always the connection to the youth structures and, and looking into the youth structures because I always believed that <coughs> where I come from, the, uh, from the German part of, of, of football, the thinking in Germany is very much structured, organized. Yeah. And through the structure, you need always uh, players that have the possibility or the potential of um, technical abilities to find solution in, in, in certain areas. What football actually, the salt in the soup makes. Uh, like uh, football is that, that players can take um, technical decisions. Mm -hmm. And uh, so in South Africa, you have that. Uh, the South, Southern Hemisphere people, you guys are South, uh, Southern Hemisphere people. Mm -hmm. It's like Argent Argentina, Brazil. Yeah. Uh, it's the same level, I think. Uh, but uh, these guys have been miles away from you in, in international football. I found it here a bit, uh, a bit uh, naive the way how it's been handled in all those years. And then that was 
my always objective for me on those years, we, we, we sat down with Mr. Mutong, with Kaiser Mutong, and I said, that's, that's a philosophy that uh, actually uh, I believe in that you can uh, have a lot of youngsters mixed with, uh, with, uh, with players that have uh, the potential to, to be uh, like a console of a team, uh, like the pillar of a team. And then you bring a lot of youngsters in, you will keep the dynam dynamism going. And um, so on those years we had, we had the chances that we had uh, people like Farouk Khan, mm -hmm. the great coaches in South Africa, uh, South Africa that has not never been, uh, been actually in the limelight and been always behind the scenes. And I was trying to take him with me on those years. Uh, to you, straight to your question, uh, is that uh, I think the education factor is a very much important part. Uh, do you have a lot of tribes in, in South Africa? Uh, those tribes uh, have own uh, own way of seeing things. Uh, Zulus are different to Kosas, mm -hmm. and they have the the cultural beliefs. Uh, so I came across with a lot of uh, story with Mabuti Kanyeza. I think you all know that. Yeah. Actually, it's later on we became uh, great friends, and yeah. we we still communicating. I try to help in his coaching education, uh, but before it was a misunderstanding, and uh, so this this misunderstanding should not happen. Uh, we, those ones who come from Europe or international football, need to know about the backgrounds here. You cannot transfer one-to-one -one what's happening international to South Africa and vice versa. Mm -hmm. So it's all giving and, and, and taking. Uh, that's what you call in South Africa here Ubuntu. So mm -hmm. that, is, that is that what makes actually the whole thing, uh, actually brings the picture up. And uh, so the education department, uh, the, the players that has been, uh, for me, uh, you have... Um, let me say that that way. In South Africa, players go from primary school to the, to the university. They have four or five years of, uh, of proper education, probably. If in Europe you have education factors in any academy, 10 to 12 years, mm -hmm. this proper education. So that means you go from college to, uh, to university, mm -hmm. if you say professional football university. So along the way, when you take... Um, 10 to 12 years South African players and bring them anywhere in the world and let them play against those those guys uh, internationally, they will never be. Uh, they will probably be even better in the in mm. the in the way of playing football. So, what is happening? Um, the part what had been long bus busy with that part. Um, what is happening with South African football between the puberty area, puber area? So or after the puber area? Mm -hmm. So that means after 13, 14 years old, to the to the to the end part where. You get the right education and then uh, the race starts, uh, like the race part of the game starts um, and comes to the coaches that want to race or want to implement the race factors. Uh, that means the, the competition factors. So that has been really through education and international football, through thinking uh, all those years developed to, to a certain way. And Africa is really be behind that and South Africa especially. <coughs> and I think <laughs> to looking into this, uh, uh, this is now I'm speaking about uh, about the surface. This is much more deeper now to look into, and mm -hmm. uh, you need more educators. <coughs> Sorry, you need more educators, educators, um, and educate those coaches. And <coughs> <coughs> and <coughs> Sorry about that. Sorry, coach. And. Uh, uh, when you look into that international football, those education after the puberty area, you find the best coaches there. Mm. Uh, not racers; uh, they don't want to race. They want to educate uh, players. And so, the understanding of international football at the moment uh, to educate those players to that level that you want to achieve is that what has been missing in South Africa. Yeah, coach. Now, I I I, I want to also continue on that on that issue. I mean, some of the players we had then. Um, Pedro Gumbuto, for an example, um, yeah. Javu Pule, um, Isaac Mabuza, um, and many others. Um, how good were those kids? <laughs> yeah, um, I, th I think they're unfortunate. I must say that unfortunate. Javu Pule, uh, mm. I think I, I have ever stated wherever ever, ever I went into whoever had the chance to talk uh, or the player that came across uh, to me that uh, I, I see him in the level of Ronaldinho. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows Ronaldinho in the world and uh, at that level he had that level. I mean, I'm coaching all over the world now, three continents and highest levels, Premier Leagues and uh, I think that it was one of the best talented players that ever came across to me that I have worked with. Mm -hmm. 
So just imagine uh, all those players and all those years you have worked with. And uh, this I was speaking to Hakan Chalonulu in Turkey about about the player. What what uh, what I saw here, we had a discussion about mm. how are the players in, in, in South Africa, and he could unlock any defense any given time. And um, so it was natural natural gifted player. So. Obviously, that has been, you can unearth that in South African football when you go to the rural areas, when you go to the townships. And, um, and obviously, uh, along the ways that it's been, the challenges, what has been there, it is, uh, I had a couple of years ago, um, we were sitting in Europe in a symposium where we discussed uh, strikers in, in Africa. It's a bit of a challenge mm -hmm. because uh, the la latest finishing touches are not anymore there. And I said, yeah, it can't be. Uh, it's my own opinion. Firstly, uh, when you go to the township where the most players actually are been first steps builded, they don't have enough balls, enough possibilities. Uh, so they have maybe 30 kids or 40 kids have one ball to play. So uh, uh, striking department is not, uh, it's high repetition, yeah, forehand, yeah. backhand every day. Mm -hmm. So that means they will develop the skill. They won't develop uh, the 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 the, 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 the practices way of finishing uh, uh, measures. So automatically, obviously, what comes into, into the mind that the midfield players, wingers, defenders probably will find a solution for you from the technical part. Mm. They grow up into that. Into that. Uh, so you need to find more possibilities. Find those kids that um, maybe later on in a in a uh, like striking classes. You you will give those talented opportunity. What is in the world football actually is required. Uh, required. Uh, we have on FIFA TSG, which I'm working sometimes, and mm. um, find out that uh, now today 90% of the goals actually happen in the box. So uh, that means uh, you need those box players, you need to be in the box, but one touch or two touch. So the third touch already is not more, uh, doesn't come to a goal for factors anymore. So that means that your first touch is the, the most important part in the box. Anyway, in international football, but in the box even more. Mm. So that makes then that you you need to think about the ages in the in the pubertary area, or after that, that you start thinking about to develop uh, like a player, like a tennis player, these strikers, like individual part. He has to finish every day thousand times forehand, thousand times backhand. Otherwise, he can't play tennis. Mm. Without you speaking about any other developments. So it means also for strikers. So, uh, and you feel then, uh, when you look to international world-class strikers, that they, when you look back what they did in the youth sections, that you find out they did that thousand times, a thousand times backhand every day. So, it is, it is a challenge that we have in, uh, here in Africa, and uh, we need to challenge these, these aspects in the right way. And I think uh, when you look into international football at the moment, we had these challenges in Turkey. Uh, African players gonna be, and this is a chance for Africa even more in the next couple of years, uh, to bring more youngsters up to international football mm -hmm. through uh, through the story that a lot of international players don't want to, uh, a lot of international countries are not producing any more youngsters anymore, because, uh, because the kids have too much uh, p other possibilities, yeah. and uh, they don't play football anymore. And uh, when you look to Germany at the moment, this is one of the biggest problems. They don't have strikers anymore, they don't have goalkeepers anymore, which were their culture. Yeah. Uh, look to 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, all 10 years, that the best strikers in the world and best goalkeepers in the world. So that has been cancelled in German football. And uh, so German football is not anymore that what it was uh, on, the, on all those years. So that mm. means the culture has been taken away. So they need to go back to the, to the, to the, to the factors that what makes them actually that what they are, mm -hmm. and uh, and uh, when we have this discussion, what makes us in Turkey that what we are? We don't have, a, let me say, a style of play. We don't have at the moment, and it's always, I call that cooking a soup, yeah. uh, taking here something, taking there something, and looking what the Germany does. What don't look what Germany does. They have other attributes to us. Uh, we are fighters. We want to fight. We want to fight the game. So we need to produce in Turkey more the type of pressing games and, 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 and the fighting factors into the game that makes the, the, the spectators and the players valuable to, that, uh, to, their, to their culture way. Yeah. And South Africa has other, other uh, ways to, to play the type of football that they want to see and, uh, so, and feel happy with it. So we need to find uh, the consensus, the type of football that South Africa want to play. Uh, and that goes obviously back to the, to the to the use factors, use uh, to the children. Now, coach, moving along. Um, obviously, you, you know, we know you as as Mr. Etugal at Kaiser Chiefs. Um, you you spent uh, quite some time there. 
Um, you know, when you look back at uh, the impact that you you had at Kerchus at the time um, as a coach, you know, uh, bringing uh, the new way of doing things, uh, you know, the football. Uh, you know, at that time, I know football science was still at the at the beginning at the beginning of, of things, but. When you holistically look back <coughs> at the role you played at Kaiser Chiefs, um, do you look back with fondness to say you have made a contribution there? Um, for my opinion, yes. I let all these people judge that. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we have we won so many trophies, mm -hmm. uh, and that's not easy. You look to the trophy draft now, last mm -hmm. years. You look to the teams, Orlando Pirates and Kaiser Chiefs. Uh, I must say that they're calling themselves yeah, there are big clubs. Uh, what makes a big club a big club? Obviously the history. Secondly, fans. Mm. And then players. So for me, uh, history very big. Fans very big. The players today, are they, are they fulfilling the market level, the coaches, the type of football? And obviously you need to win, at least big, big teams need to win trophies. Mm. So uh, when you look to those elements, uh, can you call yourself at the moment to that expectations what has been on, 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 and uh, the club's perspective, can you call yourself that? So then now the management has to think about that firstly before uh, and for Kaiser Chiefs was never coaches come and go at the moment to the mm. club. So this is uh, it's a bit uh, disturbing for my opinion and um, I think Ernst did very well when you go a little bit back to that side. and. Uh, was a bit unlucky. He lost the league in yeah. 60 minutes to yeah. go, and uh, and he did a great job. And uh, so it's a bit unfortunate that you change the coach because of that. So it was never a Kaiser Chiefs. So I'm the man, um, and I must say the the, the way how how Kaiser and myself, uh, Mr. Mutong and myself, uh, cooperate on those years was actually fantastic. And mm -hmm. I've learned so much from this uh, from this from his leadership. I must say that, and I'm um, such a great man. Mm. Football-wise, obviously, he has given me that freedom. Mm. And um, I remember when I came in, brought a little bit the science by factors in, uh, brought Elsa Storm, uh, first time yeah. a woman in football, and uh, yeah, through yeah. South Africa. Fit, and fitness training. Yeah, yeah, and uh, and, and uh, two women actually, Elsa Storm and uh, Adri De Jong, the South African champion of, of uh, 800 meter, if I'm not mistaken. Mm. So I found that the coordination, uh, running pattern, and the players were not running straight and didn't get enough out of the pace and of the power to, to accelerate. So we, we worked on these elements. I had a player like Sia Bongo no Veto in the beginning. Uh, he was never playing and he was always injured. Remember mm -hmm. that, and one of the great players that I can ever cross. Yeah. And uh, so he was Elsa's handbag. So he was, <laughs> he was always injured. So mm -hmm. we, we looked to his muscle type and he was so quick for his muscle. So he got every time injured because mm -hmm. of, his, of his speed and acceleration. So he needed to be his corner, he was not, uh, not in, in order. So Elsa took that, this and it's always nice to have a woman in, in, in professional setup. It's, it's, uh, it gives you different, uh, a different environment and Elsa is, is one, of the, one of the best fitness coaches I ever come across mm -hmm. in, uh, in, my, in my world. So yeah, I took her where well, uh, uh, always I, I went and uh, I remember when Kaiser was saying to me, uh, coach, we don't have that in our culture. We have women in professional football say, change your culture, coach, yeah. uh, chairman, president, uh, because she will bring a certain. And this man was always a man, took something new and said, yeah. okay, let's try. And that made actually now I see nearly everywhere we have, uh, yeah, we I mean, have uh, women. Of and now. it is very much important uh, when you have this man domain uh, and it's uh, and uh, there is a woman involved, everybody is straight himself. It's, yeah. it's a bit different. and. They think differently, and Elsa is a true professional, better than most professionals, and uh, so it made my life very much easier yeah. having people like Elsa, Adri De Jong, uh, Farouk Khan, uh, such such capable people next yeah. to me. So yeah. all those success is not only on me; it's also I'm, I'm a person I like to share, and um, not only those players. And all those years have also worked with South African coaches mm. and, and made coaches, and uh, so. When you look to Fani Madida, uh, Patik Mabedi, Dr. Komalo, all became coaches later on. And uh, mm. so um, I hope I'm not forgetting somebody now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, so it's always not only on players, you also need to look to former players to, to get this involvement. And I see people now like Fabian McCarthy, Cyril Zama, all those great, great, great players are yeah. not involved enough in football, in professional football. 
or in youth football. So these are the elements you need to take care of your assets, and you don't do that. Yeah. And uh, you know, in your, at your, in your first stint at Kaiser Chiefs, you caught some of the top, top South African players there. Yeah, yeah, I did. Uh, I mean, yeah, uh, you, you asked me about regrets, uh, or people should um, uh, decide that we, we had a sort of fantastic team. Um, in the beginning, it was a bit of, of a problem for me because the, the way I wanted to have certain things, to bring the new methodics in, it was sometimes, yeah, Doggy was in an age that uh, uh, come the last years where yeah. You know, when you elder elder players, uh, some new th new other different methods comes in, and they always a bit. Uh, but uh, Doggy was great. We, we had we have still a great relationship. Yeah. And uh, obviously, I would have loved to have him when he was so long 20, ago. 25, or on those young years. So yeah. that was. Uh, uh, I had a fantastic one one player I will never forget, and has never become enough in the lame light. Tabu Moki. Yeah. Tabu was for me one also one of the players that came come across in my life that. You don't have players like that. Uh, when I look to the international football today, I wish I had him. I think also another Philippe Trozier loved him. I yeah, think yeah, Philippe yeah. unearthed him. So same background a little bit. Tabang, and Tabang Tabang so yeah. yeah, and yeah, uh, late Tabang. So they were, they were players that has the, that had this dynamic and, and the intelligence in football. So when you build a team around, I have always built a team on those years around Tabu Muki. Mm. Uh, so he was the first on the on the on the lineup, and Tabu was the direct partner for me to talk to. Mm. And when I wanted certain things to be done, so and I see, I would love to see a player like that, a, a person like that, being involved in international football and in football in South Africa. And you see, these boys actually can explain you so much what 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 they have done. Mm. And when you look to those years, 2000, 2001, 2002, how this uh, type of football was played. Uh, when you look today, and I feel uh, they should look to these games a little bit more, mm. then you will see how they played. So, are you pretty much saying that uh, people always say it's not fair to compare eras, but you know, to a large extent, we can. Uh, um, the, the current players now, not only at Chiefs but across the board in the league, are not anywhere near the doctors, Tabo no. and Zamas, and, and them. Brian no. Maloy. No chance. No, no, no. I've worked with this bunch bunch of players, uh, Stanton Fredericks, for instance. Yeah. Uh, I mean, look, you can see that uh, what is the demand on international football, and maybe it's painful what I'm saying now, and uh, but I'd love to say the, the, the how it is. Uh, I've been now working in international football in Turkey with the national team. Uh, come across all the stadiums, you go watching the games, and you speak to the chairmen, we speak to the coaches, and I get very close to the coaches because. I was also the person you need to link up mm -hmm. uh, and speaking to those coaches because of the performance analysis of players. And um, when we speak about, about African players and everybody says, why don't South African players are not coming anymore yeah. too? And on those years we had Shuz Moshe from here in Turkey, we had uh, Steve Compela, uh, Afir Piri, uh, Eskuse. Yeah. Uh, we had so many great players playing international football, not only in Turkey, international football. Why not anymore? So that means that uh, there, is, there is something wrong. That question has to be asked. It's not, the, the, it's not the, the problem of these guys, there's the problem of here. Are you bringing enough uh, players up? Uh, now you had one of the great players coming to England and didn't make it there. That's the truth. Now you went on to al -Ahli, you know, he's, he's scoring again back in a, in a great team uh, with his former coach and he's feel happy and he's play scoring and plays well. But he didn't make it in international football. Mm -hmm. These are the questions that we need to ask. Mm -hmm. Was he patient enough to stay longer there? Because uh, it's, it, is, it is important that uh, you need to see that, and this is the truth, the intensity of, of what has been required in, in, in world football. You don't have that here. Yeah. So, I mean, I was uh, speaking to, when we were a national team, with uh, the players like uh, Hakan Chalonul or uh, Chalar Suinji Chalar, who plays for Leicester, yeah, Hakan for Inter now. When you look, when you speak to those boys and, and actually, asking them the processes, the, the, the training methods, what's going through, and watching them in training session, you see they are, they are 14 to 16 hours per week uh, on, the, on the working uh, scale. Uh, they come at 8 o'clock in the morning and go in the evening 8 o'clock. Uh, so th it is a full-time job. It's not always on the field. But the analysis, the body composition, individual training session, position training session, uh, opposite opponent analysis, own analysis. Uh, so this is a... This is a multi-million uh, dollar business yeah. in international football. So, and coming two hours for training session uh, and, and uh, putting the finger in the air and, and uh, see where the wind comes from, you know, it, it doesn't work anymore. Yeah. So 
you need to be prepared, you're fighting against the best in the world. And mm. when you go and you want to go to the World Cup, it's the naive, yes, to talk about the referee, about, I also wrote about that. But in the end, uh, Ghana was all over you. Yeah. So these are the, and you've been 90 minutes busy then uh, later on, busy with the referee, instead of focusing uh, on the game and finish the game at the highest level, you had, you had chance then still to score. Yeah. But now you, you're mentally uh, only busy with the referee, yes, we, we discussed it, but in the end you could have could have managed it because you actually was one one step uh, there to be uh, in the in the playoffs now. We could have beaten Zimbabwe 2-0 here. Yeah. yeah. So these are the elements that firstly start by yourself and and and, and, and then later on uh, we'll see what the other elements, mm -hmm. the outside elements are. Yeah. And I think um, the world football in, in and also also I'm blaming uh, also in, in Turkey at the moment and I was very criticizing criticizing the, the aspects what is happening there. Uh, but uh, in the end, uh, we uh, as coaches, been so long in this business, actually can contribute so much to those ones who are going to take decisions uh, in, in, uh, to help actually then the football to grow. That means that you need to have those, uh, those people much more involved in elements that they have gone through that mm -hmm. and, and, and not actually know the, know, knows the, the, the challenges that has been ahead of you. Mm -hmm. Now, coach. Um, <coughs> you had a lot of trophy success as Ke at Kaiser Chiefs, come competitions and, and all that, and obviously also playing a significant role in sort of, you know, revolution, uh, revolutionizing uh, the team. Uh, it was already professional, but also adding more to that. But there's always been this thing that, um, you know, two spells, that you never won the league. Um, do, do you have a regret that you didn't deliver the, the league title for Kaiser Chiefs? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I told a lot about that, and um, we were twice very, very close. Yeah. Uh, and so the one thing was uh, you building, and that was we spoke to the chairman, and, and, and I need to find my words right. Uh, Kaiser told me that you won the league. Uh, actually, that was was with a little bit of the, the story with Patrick Butu and uh, Jabu Pula. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Two of my best players. Yeah. Sitting in the morning in the in the camp, and uh, actually going to the breakfast, we just need to get the point against the uh, Free State Stars. We're done. And then suddenly I look and then ask everybody, "Where's where's, where's Jabu and Patrick?" And nobody knew. And I call phone to the chairman. I say, uh, so he says to me, "Not what, what 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 do I know? I mean, you missed with the players. You them there. <laughs> so they were gone. Mm. And um, yeah." To blame that, yes, it is. Uh, it made everyone uh, on that day, everyone, uh, because we just came back back from um, Africa Cup, I think, from Seychelles. Mm. We stood a little bit longer over because uh, there was the rain, the monsoon rain, and we couldn't play. So we, we need to wait another two days or three days to, to play, play the game and yeah. then come back, and it was uh, just a challenge. And then we couldn't cancel the game, so we needed to play the game. Suddenly, these two were gone. So we lost, we lost the league on that. Mm. There was another chance that we uh, could have won it. There was the six games, six players in the Olympic Games. Uh, people have forgotten about that. Mm. Had, if I'm not mistaken, six six players went, went to the Olympic team. That was the successful team uh, in Olympics in Australia 2000. Yeah. And we had six players there. So we cancelled all of our games. The league continued to play. So it was, it was I have never experienced it. It was a mammoth task after to catch up. So it's better to, to have these games have, have games uh, in the hand. So it was, yeah. in the end, we lost it with one point. Mm. Uh, so, uh, yes, obviously it, it hangs on me. Mm. I, I came across uh, as well with Trabzonspor. We, we lost the league also very, very, very close. I came across several times with it, uh, but that was unfortunate. When you, you cannot win, there's only one team gonna win it. Yeah. Uh, so, like, there's only one national coach. We have hundreds, thousands. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, uh, in the end, uh, it's the work what you do. I think you need to look into. Yeah. And um, I'm in peace myself. So I think I've produced to that so many players and produced great football. And sometimes it doesn't go in a, a hand in hand, bringing so much dying, doing something for the for the for the team, for the country, bring mm. a lot of youngsters up. Mm. But in the end, somewhere you lose out. So yeah. that was that hunted me a bit. Yeah. yeah. Now, Kaiser Chiefs, we all know, big club, massive expectations. 
and uh, you know from time to time <laughs> they have got players there um some you know big 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 big, big figures <laughs> and uh, some also you know <laughs> i know you know where i'm going with this <laughs> um you earlier on you touched on your your your, your highly publicized um, uh, differences with mabudu kanyeza there, there was also another incident where you you know you you, you apparently you had a situation with uh, with Scapi. Can you just you know tell us what happened between you and Scapi? I, I still he's claiming some sum that I don't know where, where he comes from. I must say that mm -hmm. I really I must have done completely. I don't know what he's talking about, and I really don't know where this comes from. So mm -hmm. first, this is Kaiser Chiefs. This is not a Mickey Mouse team. Mm -hmm. So the first one to took Scapi out, to give him the professional. It's me. So I was actually the one who have convinced the chairman and the surroundings, and uh, we I was because on those years was very close to Farouk, mm. and was every time in training session with Farouk, and I trained sometimes myself the, the youth, and then sometimes we had uh, once a week we played uh, against our own youth side. So he was always playing against the first team, and then. Uh, uh, I could see his capability and uh, this was the reason and we, we actually took him down to the first team. So this is the first thing. So now he's, he's coming up to the, to the team and he's placed this, uh, doesn't want to release the ball, doesn't want to release the ball. It's the first thing what I, I, what I was trying to explain him that he here in the first team, he needs to be a little bit, uh, let me say, quicker in his decisions mm -hmm. and, and, and the way how to handle things. But he had his own way every time he wants to keep. So if everyone like then on that time, Tabu Muki, Stanton Fredericks, Jabu Pulis and all these guys want to hold on to the ball, we don't have a game. The game today is about uh, receiving and passing nearly less than two seconds. Uh, so that means uh, in 90 minute average. Mm. So that otherwise you don't have a game. So if everybody stands on the ball and uh, and makes his, uh, yeah. uh, there's, there's no game anymore. Yeah. So uh, Scapi was a very, very extremely talented player and I had very big hopes in him to, but uh, so you need to have a talent, you need to have the work ethic and you need to have also the understanding how to bring this all this together and and, uh, and and become that type of player. So if I could manage that with players like Jabu Puli, who comes also from a different background, mm -hmm. with Patrick Butu, Tlantla Kubekas, and all these youngsters who came through that level, I think we could have managed that as well with Kapi. Uh, but then I left, I didn't know what, but what yeah. he claims there, it's, it's, a bit, it's a bit sad, but has nothing to do with me, yeah. I think. Yeah, so, there were so many good talents, and Scapi was a talent, but that's Junior it. Kanye? Junior Kanye was a fan, but has nothing. Uh, junior, I didn't uh, had uh, with me. Uh, junior was also mm. Jesus, uh, also a player that really, really could come to another level. There were so many of that uh, mm. players, but uh, obviously, uh, this is not a this business is not a pension uh, business. Yeah. This, this is a hard and uh, very, very aggressive business and uh, you need to deliver as a player. Yeah. Uh, so if there's, if there's some misunderstandings on those, you're sorry, but he could have made it then uh, uh, somewhere else. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So why blaming then? <laughs> I don't get it. So he yeah. could have made it then somewhere else if he has that talent, yeah. because that talent was discovered by us. You mentioned uh, players like Dr. Kumalo, Jabu, Stanton Fredericks, Patrick Mbuto, Tabu Moki. There's one guy we, we we're not mentioning, um, and I would love to you to give me an opinion on Emmanuel Skarangoves. Oh, um, how good was this guy? Yeah, unfortunately, also uh, it was also not me who sent him away or something. That's that's had nothing to do uh, because I was just I think he was left when I came or something like that. Uh, he was already gone. When I came. Mm. Uh, Obviously, these are the type of players have. Uh, South Africa brings this type of players all those years up. Or you can always find some players like that. Uh, a special player, when he touched the ball, he could unlock any defense. Mm -hmm. uh, he could, in tight areas, he could um, find solutions to, to, to make the team tick. Let me say that you don't have these players anymore. Yeah. Uh, and uh, obviously, you, these are assets. You need to really. Uh, to put these boys in a cotton wool, mm -hmm. but they need to understand also to work for hard and for the team. Mm -hmm. 
I had uh, Tulani Cereros as well by Ajax uh, came out. Uh, Young Ino, uh, Young, which I just uh, when we yeah. went to Holland, uh, also a player that I discovered from Cyprus, uh, Turkish side of Cyprus. We we bought him for twenty five thousand dollar, <laughs> and he was now a world star suddenly. Yeah. And um, yeah, they, they, but they listened and, and uh, they they really wanted to work. Clifford Kobenis. Uh, also, he was already chased out, and, and I got him back, and he was then suddenly the player of the year and uh, young player of the year. Itu Kunes, that been uh, Itu was in front of uh, in front of three internationals, which we put Itu in front of the internationals. So mm -hmm. you, as a coach, you also need to have that belief on the player and to put him in when actually the the, the competition is very high. So, uh, you have in South Africa always special talents, but they need to be moved on the right way and they, they bring the talent, but talent is today nothing. Yeah. Uh, it will be lost in the way out. So, they need to understand the talent needs to make up, mix up with... I had Lalana when I was um, with Ajax three years ago, before the World Cup. Yeah. Uh, Lalana, Lalana came to Sports Science Institute here in New Newlands to get fit for the World Cup and uh, he the sometimes England came uh, yeah, from England, from mm -hmm. Liverpool. Mm -hmm. And sometimes he was uh, training by his, uh, with his own coach here and came to Ajax. And I asked him, can you have a speech to my players, uh, boy? Uh, so he was, he was explaining the same like uh, Chala, uh, that he comes in, morning, in the morning, 8 o'clock, leaves 8 o'clock. Uh, they ask him, how many months uh, in, the, in the day you have off? He says, off? There's no off, there's just uh, some sometimes in here we have this eight, ten days, that's all. Yeah. There is no off, forget about off. So p the players on, on this, they have a chance through talent to achieve something that the world can be under, under their feet. But uh, sometimes these boys, they come in the morning and then in the evening they don't know what to do. So yeah. they, they don't know what to do because in the end this is a period that that they're going through and this is our six, seven, eight, nine years that they can reach the top and they have the talent for it. Mm. And it's painful to see that, that uh, it's such and that's, that's what I believe maybe I can help that these youngsters to a little bit move into. And this is why I have always done any team that I went into, try to help these players and bring those players in. Mm. Um, let's go to, uh, I know you have touched on, on, on Ajax a bit, but maybe let's zoom in there. Um, that, that was a fantastic project uh, you had there. Um, I remember we used to call them the chickens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there were many youngsters at <laughs> one time. Also the brilliant team yeah. that yeah. you assembled. Two, seven, two, two, eight. That was uh, something. Uh, we had uh, Eduardo Ferreira coming in. Uh, Bryce Moon, what yeah. a player. That's, I mean, uh, he was like uh, on the wing. That Evans. Uh, Brad Evans on the left, left so Bryce, Bryce on the right, uh, Franklin Kale in front, uh, Young Eno, Clifford Gobini, Terra Fontaine, mm. uh, Ferreira, an unbelievable, uh, Dominic Isaacs, yeah. uh, unbelievable players that you can. Uh, it for any coach, uh, you, you will have, it was not like, couldn't wait to be in the morning and training yeah. session because you, you had to really, boys waiting to, to, be, to be on the field and training session. They had never, never said anything, they just wanted to work. And that was actually, unfortunately, I couldn't stay long. Mm. Uh, it was always these interruptions uh, from Turkey, interruptions from international football. Sometimes Kazi Chiefs went back to Chiefs again. So I had yesterday I went to, to, to the chairman, we had a chat with uh, Sean Bartlett and uh, mm. the chairman was saying now, uh, say, if you could have stayed three, four, five years here, it would have been a different story here. Yeah. Unfortunately, every time it was short, short, and then left, short, short, left. Every time happened something, so mm. unfortunately, yeah. yeah. And you must be said that the club doesn't exist anymore. Well, it does in a different name, but the brand, I, I escaped on is no longer there. Yeah, the, the relationship firstly was, uh, and then what happened, family, and then obviously what happened with the, with the federation and the league. Uh, it's just it's yeah. heartbreaking to see that uh, on those years that the league actually allows uh, the federation actually allows with a letter that you can use the player, mm -hmm. and then from the other side, this is just I have no words for that. And yeah. uh, these 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 guys were actually uh, a catapult to South African football. So you actually cutting your own egg, cutting your own legs. 
you need just not to see the team as a as a factor because the investment is very important. Yeah. Uh, what uh, what has been transpiring internationally? You don't you actually your own environment. You not see that from international. When you look into them, we had just in Holland uh, our game that we played uh, the World Cup qualifiers when we went in Holland and and I went earlier to watch a couple of games of Holland and then we had the discussions and we came to that point as well. And then in the end, uh, having international football and, and big names here in South African football involved gives you also a, fa a picture and, 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 and a window and a door to, to be in these international uh, mm. parts in the world. So mm. it's unfortunately, I'm, I have speaking also to a so couple of sponsors international football to maybe look into a little bit South African football yeah. again in the future, but in new structures. Mm. So and uh, hopefully you can find in any township uh, what you will find in townships in uh, or in favelas in, Bra in Brazil, Brazil you yeah. will find also in South Africa mm. I'm convinced about that and um, you have had um, other so-called low-profile uh, jobs here and there you know um, but your other high-profile job was a pilot and um, I remember uh, just generally things didn't go well there didn't actually I followed a little bit through the media and through the later on, uh, actually I don't understand the first things. Um, the whole story was with Black Aces and we had such a great su success. It's been forgotten in South Africa. Black Aces uh, became in the, in, the, in the top five, was, uh, yeah. was uh, actually a major issue. And um, the great success in the end, this team was sold and it was heartbreaking actually. You, can see, you could see we were ensembling again a team that what, uh, what we happened with Ajax. So, and Outside interest came already in, and then some uh, scout of Arsenal came in, scout from Sivaspor uh, came in, uh, was watching our games. We had uh, also uh, brought up uh, Obri Modiba, mm -hmm. Tabo Nodada, uh, Judas Mose Medi, all from the, all, all those, yeah. all these youngsters also again on that time for me. And there were another, another bunch of players coming through now and, and next season and, uh, and also reinvented again uh, players that has been um, rejected. Uh, uh, Obri, um, Obri Goma, Besuma. Uh, Besuma. Oh, it was great to work with Collins on, on those years, and uh, we actually ensembled the whole team around him that he doesn't need to go back. And so we, we find a system and pattern to suit him that he had the final touch. Uh, yeah, we had some great players who were ensembled. That was actually Shoei Boltas came in. Yeah. Uh, that was heartbreaking. So then uh, want to come back to. to with the team, I uh, was not comfortable on that, uh, to be relocated. And uh, there was a couple of other uh, teams and obviously Pirates, a big club. And uh, yeah, there's many, many things I can say in the public, but this is not for the public. What I only can say is that until now, unless that was the first loss, I have not left because of the loss. Mm. What I can say on that time. This year is now past. I have not left left the club, and the way why, how I did it was unprofessional. I must say that it was not. But I was very angry, mm. and I don't think so that when these certain things that I don't will never mention in the public because I have a great respect for the chairman yeah. and I have great respect the cup to the to the to the club and to the supporters. So you cannot come out and put dirty linen. Yeah. Coaches come and go. We are hired for a certain job to do. If there is not more required, you go. But I took my decision. And when you do that, uh, there must be a really huge reason behind that. Mm -hmm. And uh, that reason was not result. And we were leading in the half time 1 0 when we go to the half time. So, more I don't want to talk about that. Yeah. Uh, and obviously, this was, for my opinion, was a bit looking all those years back now, but a bit disrespectful to the chairman. But if I wouldn't do that on that way, he would have con convinced me to stay. I want to stay. I don't want to stay anymore. Yeah, that yeah. was, and then the same result happened again. A couple of uh, three weeks or four yeah. weeks later. <laughs> so it was not me. Yeah, yeah. So now uh, some people always or some f have forgotten about that. That, no, that was no, that was not my result. This result happened again. So and then looking back to it, all those years now, how many trophies after these years? And where you been after all these years, and how many coaches have come and go? Mm. So now I think 
I said of enough, of enough about that and uh, it's a very big club. Uh, I would work again with the ch chairman is great, but uh, there are other, other elements that has yeah. to be sorted out. So yeah. because uh, what I feel is that you see that also with chiefs now. For my opinion, the management has to look to ourselves why they're not there where they are. Mm. Because they haven't won a cup in years. Yeah, but the Sundowns is the big club now here. And uh, sorry, it's, it's like that. Mm. Uh, Sundowns is, when you go all over now uh, in international football, people speaking about Sundowns. You don't hear see, you don't hear Kaiser Chiefs. You don't hear, this is history. This is, uh, and you need to accept that. So quick as possible, get back to the track and get uh, satisfied you people that has been millions behind you. And that's, that I must say that I mean I will that will that will be now. Yeah. I'm uh, putting a little bit my finger in the wounds of people. That will be probably a big yeah, talk yeah, again. Yeah, yeah. But success, uh, football is played on the pitch, and uh, those years <laughs> you have to bring it back. But coach, I mean maybe just on on this issue, how does Pirates and Chiefs keep up with Sundowns? Because clearly, Sundowns is there, and then they're here. And they're supposed to be competing on the same level. I don't want to listen to the, to the, to the story of money. Then uh, if the story is the money, uh, PSG should win everything. Yeah. Champions League, anything with Messi, Neymar and all these all this glamour players. But you don't win, win games with glamour. You win games with hard work. And um, it's hard work. It's <laughs> I will never forget, I had some rug uh, rugby background people. I bring Elsa in, so suddenly I hear these are the, 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 the people of fitness. <laughs> so no, no, no. The people of fitness is me. I will decide what time training session we do. Yeah. So uh, what I want to say is that uh, Sundowns has match managed and the chairman and the whole setup, the management has done something right. So first thing is not every time the coach. So the first thing is about the management. And so I think Patrice, Mr. Patrice Motsepe, the president, have have done something right. Yeah. So now they bring a great coach, been long years there. So that's a very, very much important. I know when uh, we beat Sundowns with Black Aces and people were running uh, the head of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of Pitts on, the, on, the, on this time. Uh, I remember that in, uh, in Pumalanga, in uh, Nelspreet in the stadium, we beat them one nil with 10 players. We had a red card very mm -hmm. early and we beat them. So the, the supporters went mad. And they wanted uh, actually to fire Pizzo. And the chairman said, no, I'm going to continue because he knows what, uh, what Pizzo was doing. Yeah. So that is how the points that sometimes when, when things are not uh, in football is up and down. So then uh, go to the English Premier League, City, Liverpool, Manu, Tottenham. I don't know how many of them have I forgotten. One can only win the league, but the other ones need to be in competitive at least. And... Uh, you see that Liverpool sometimes also struggle, but City sometimes get in. Liverpool gets in. Tottenham is, is a very big club. Uh, Manu now changed just now the coach, yeah. uh, which he bro brought a fantastic coach in. There, and I hope we'll give him time to, to work on it. Mm. But he's a hard worker. He will drive the bus by himself and cut the grass by himself. Yeah. Such kind of a coach you will be. So he will, he will be on the neck of the players every day. Yeah. This is not a... This is not a Pension. This is this is really these guys are a billion dollars business here. So, and this man will will has to drive the bus by himself and cut the grass by himself. Yeah. This this is the way how it is. Mm -hmm. And um, obviously he will have twenty people around him, experts will will lead to it. But he is the, is the only one man who's going to take that decision. It's not not other ones. So it's, it's the man who is brought in to handle the story. And uh, so it's like a Formula One race. Uh, there is one man in the cockpit. Yeah. You cannot have ten men. Uh, you want to put the car on the wall. But it's got support. Yes, in, and you have uh, twenty people, uh, fifty people supporting him. And but the one man going to take decision because he is on the driving. Uh, he's racing, mm -hmm. and he can see things much more than any anyone else. So uh, because he sees the way from from the driving, uh, not from above. Mm -hmm. This is a complete different story. This is the same in football. Um, where are they? Uh, why Sundown so good? For f long years, but good coaches. Everyone is good in his, in, uh, on his way. I, I'm watching that. And I must say that uh, they will run for years. Not only the players, the recruitment, uh, 
fitness levels, the organization form, the tactical level. When you watch Sundowns, you watch like a European team. Mm. Organized, uh, beautiful football what they're playing. Uh, with the organization, with the, uh, with the discipline on the players. There is no standing on the ball and making those nonsense. There is really organized scoring factors, looking how to get into the uh, last third and how to block the opponent. So They went 13 games without conceding. They have not lost away from home in the longest time. They, they are not losing matches. So now, now how can you say it is the players we get in? You, you, uh, you, you can get any, a lot of players, but in the end you need to move good players. Yeah. So, and it's more difficult, more difficult uh, to, uh, to work with players that have arrived, been big players, good players, and they know that they're good. It's more difficult to handle them, to bring them in a consensus. Yeah. So, um, coach, I want to pick up brains on something here. Um, football has evolved, uh, you know, since the, the early days when we started. Now, uh, here all coaches talk about this um, sports science. It's uh, video analysis. Um, it's, 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 a, it's a serious analysis of the opposition and all those kinds of things. Uh, how important is, is, is this innovations in terms of helping players and also making sure that coaches are continuing to improve? Just one thing, before Holland game, um, we had the complete analysis of the team. Um, and then Hakan Chalun... In Turkey. In Turkey, no. yeah. Hakan Chalun, we were sitting actually with the coach on the, on the table, uh, dinner, late, 10 o'clock, late dinner. Hakan, Hakan Chalun, everybody knows, yeah. Inter Milan, comes to me, so the coach, can I talk to you? Took me out of the table, went to the lobby, we sat down on the lobby, and other players came in and said, Coach, explain me again, please. What are the pressing moments? What are the pressing moments of just, just to require that? Um, the build up processes, okay, let's, let's go through again mentally. So just imagine a player who plays in the very highest level, yeah. 10 o'clock in the evening, generally you find them getting to rest. Yeah. Still wants to talk about, get me out of the table, still wants to talk about the game tomorrow, about the pressing moments, the pressing elements, build up processes, the windows he needs to be. Mm. So you're saying something that's very much important. When you look to Leicester City at the, at the moment, if I'm not mistaken, probably six analysts, uh, four, five, six uh, performance analysts, performance coaches. Um, the most important thing is that the players, the valuable of players, are, the players are very, very valuable at the moment. Um, it gets more and more. So you have players that Chala at the moment, uh, Chala Sönjes at the moment, on mm -hmm. a, on a, it's like a stock market exchange. He's probably on 40 million value at the moment, 40 million pounds. Speaking about the player that has a value from a, a middle to big uh, term company, mm -hmm. income company. So for, we're speaking about 40 million pounds here, mm -hmm. one player. So you have 25, 28 players. So if you put that equal, just imagine what kind of player's value is running around. What, do you want to give that in hands that, uh, that doesn't know the science, doesn't uh, analyze the player? So today we also, all the coaches, the elderly coaches has to change. Um, we as, as coaches need to like, like when you do the medici medicine, when you became a doctor 20 years ago, the mm -hmm. medicine on those years is completely different yeah. today. So you need to you need to move up with the science. The game has is much more quicker. Uh, it's elec elef electrifying pace. I just mentioned that we we are under two seconds now internationally receiving and passing. Uh, every player is like in a in a in a, in a bottle of uh, or glass. Uh, you know exactly what is in. Players come in the morning in, uh, give uh, a little bit of a spit, give him urine and you will have the uh, pH, uh, pH test. Mm. A pH test shows you if he's tired or not. Uh, so, and then uh, uh, the training session will build to his, his level. So you, don't, you can't have these players uh, been injured. Mm. So if you have three players which is value of 40, 50 million pounds, 60 million pounds, injured three months uh, so the insurance companies have to pay that yeah. so it, it, it is a it is an unbelievable chain behind that so you need as a one a head coach alone uh, about the training methodics about the individual part of a player about the analysis you have no chance for that the game has uh, uh, become to a level that every 
every single uh, element is so important that you can uh, get a little bit more above the other one. So that means, uh, position-wise, it's everything has been analyzed. Uh, you have uh, uh, today the the sprint facts, not the, 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 the meters that you're doing, the, the sprint factors are important. Mm -hmm. So if you have these wings they have uh, in the game, should have around uh, 700, 80, 800 meter, at least uh, uh, one kilometer, at least a sprint form. So that means uh, you need to train accordingly to that. Yeah. Uh, you cannot every time have a training session that uh, is like uh, from this position you take the player individually uh, and train them uh, uh, in the mu muscle composition on the individual part. And then you have this individual game, which uh, have a certain elements to, to. So you you work through uh, through that. Uh, Leipzig has found uh, years years ago a helmet that uh, like you play the video games, and you, the former player, the player that played the former game, the last game, can see his own game through a 360 degrees uh, helmet. And mm. then uh, the discussion is why you could pass the ball here, you could uh, you could move uh, in that hole there. Why did you didn't see that hole? So uh, important is that how can you develop uh, the game to a much more effective level? And uh, what I must say that uh, you have obviously uh, today the head coach doesn't decide anymore on training sessions. Mm -hmm. uh, the, just the training, the methodics. What I'm, what we do generally as head coaches, we say, okay, I, ha I have this uh, this week a certain elements what I want to train tactically, but uh, the player's fitness, the player's level, and the position specific aspects uh, needs to be looked into. And then you combine that to your training sessions and uh, your performance coaches will come to you and explain me, this one today is injured, this one today is, uh, is overloaded, mm. this one uh, could be injured because of uh, one, two, three uh, factors. So you need to look into that to find your training consents then. So it is, it is high, high, high uh, scientific and there's too much money involved to just be going over uh, in, in a way. And today the most important thing is that uh, what uh, we're discussing that this morning or that we had coaches who gave uh, in my time order and also today uh, giving young boys an order and want to get a result from that is not going to happen anymore. Yeah. <laughs> you need to, uh, you can't give just orders. Man yeah, management. So is the man management and obviously players want the feedback. So when I, when I speak to Hakan or Chala or, or these very, very high level players, and we also think about how do you feel when we play uh, this level, uh, what is your pass pattern, could you see that? And you need to get feedback to understand because the game from outside is again different to that of the game inside, what I mm. mentioned before in the Formula One race. Mm. So these boys want to win, they are, they are drilled uh, for that. And there's no more uh, because they want to achieve. Uh, when you're in there, these guys have like a stock market exchange today. Yeah. And uh, they, they want to get to the highest level. And when we had uh, the Euro, played a very bad Euro, the boys were very unhappy with it because they, they want to win, because their market value dropped. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that, that is that we coaches need to bring their market value up. And uh, so if you can achieve that, they will cut the Lions career. And you know, these things are all you know, well and good, but at the end of the day, the responsibility is on the players. Because for an example, here in South Africa, to this day, we still have players rocking up for training session, smelling of alcohol. Yeah. Uh, the, all these things won't work if the players are not committed, are not, are not uh, disciplined, are not focused on what needs to be done. <laughs> Very important. This is the naivety, uh, the naivety that I'm always come across, and uh, it's up to us to convince. It's up to us to look into the youth departments, uh, as I mentioned. <coughs> Sorry, I mentioned uh, about tributary area. Mm. Uh, the focus has to be there. Um, otherwise, you can't. Uh, if yeah. you, if you, as I said, they come in the morning, they've been checked. Uh, if you need hundred percent to standard, uh, you cannot be competitive. Uh, you cannot be. Uh, the dynamism is not right. So yeah. if you come with an alcohol day to training session, it's, it's <laughs> so the intensity. What I always say that we had a just discussion last week with some football important football people in South Africa is that uh, what are the difference what you have seen in Europe now when it comes to I said one thing, intensity. Sessions intensity, the week intensity, game intensity. And uh, so if you, if you can't train with the highest level of intensity in training session, you will never make it in the set. Yeah, yeah. And this intensity, just imagine, uh, they're playing Sunday, Wednesday, Sunday, Wednesday, tonight is Champions League again. Yeah, yeah. So in the weekend, again, they need to perform. 
So uh, the, 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 the intensity of the sessions, the intensity of the games, the regeneration and the preparation, this is, this is the coming 8 o'clock in the morning, the leaving 8 o'clock in the morning. There is no between. Uh, if you lose the space, you won't get it back because the other one who comes in, they will, they will take that space. Mm -hmm. So uh, the boys here who have the chance, and I will say that they have the talent in South Africa, they have the possibility here, but uh, they need to catch up with the level of the international football, otherwise you will always get yeah. the stay behind and the gap's going to be bigger. Mm. That's why you gave the example of Pesitao. He goes to England, he doesn't make it, but he's more comfortable playing in Egypt because he's at almost familiar environment with a familiar coach. Yeah, the, he took his decision on that, on, on that part, but uh, he, this, is a, this is one of the examples. How mm. many players, the last ones, Benny McCarthy, uh, Shiloh, now is now Steve, Stevie is now with uh, Ajax. Mm. Um, who else? Young Ino, from my side. Uh, who else? Yeah, you can't think. Yeah, of I many forget somebody. Yeah. Stanton Fredericks with me to Krapos Grasshopper Zurich. Uh, I wanted to get Shaba out, uh, Shabalala to Sivas Sivas for one of those years, but we couldn't because the, he was too expensive. So it is very difficult. Yeah. I must say that. So players need to get out to see the international level. Libo Manyama came in. That was actually not his fault. It was three coaches been changed on that yeah. time. So any coach comes in as his own. So we need to also see those those elements. But in the end, we need to look how many players have done last year's international mm. so from South African football. We 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 you know, you you, you love South Africa. Um, you've been here for too long. Uh, you love uh, South African football. Well, for now, for now we've got a new coach now, um, the Belgium guy, Hugo Bruce. He, he, he's taking us in a direction of saying, uh, you know, let's build the team around younger players. Uh, I am sure you totally agree with this, you know, approach of how things must be done for the team. Yeah, you can see that already. I mean, uh, you guys are in South African football, football and Safa is very, very lucky to have a man like Hugo here. Hugo Bros is no very known in his own country. Yeah. Uh, he was a great player and also uh, a great coach. Uh, he comes from a background, Belgian football. Belgian football is one of the best in the world. And this is not for nothing. Uh, this small country has done, it's a small country, mm. uh, has done tremendously and brought all these players up. So that means there's something right what they're doing in long terms. <coughs> uh, the coach is, uh, for me, very brave in this situation to do that, what he did. Uh, he doesn't want to save his own name. He wants to bring something to South African mm. football. So a man like that can't go to a, to a game. He uh, wants to see the players that uh, in, in 10 days or two weeks uh, needs to play a very important game uh, for the World Cup qualifier. And he can't, he can't, he's not allowed to go to the stadium. You can't, you can't tell me the reasons. I don't want to know about the reasons the coach wants to go. It doesn't matter does he uh, has a card or not card. He's the national coach. He wants to see the game. And I think the, the, the way it was proper to o organize that he goes to the stadium and wants want to watch these players or coming players. I mean, this is, this is the thing that you guys need to really think about it. Mm. And uh, it doesn't matter who that is and what it is, and it, 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 is, it is unheard, mm. firstly. And uh, it's disturbing his job. Secondly, uh, obviously the Ghana story went a little bit of a, um, was a little bit unlucky, uh, but I hope, I hope the South African media, uh, football people, and uh, the, the people who decides uh, South African football have enough patience with, with this man. And uh, he's a great coach. Probably sometimes uh, he has his elbows and uh, he has his vision, but uh, you also need to know that they are leaders. And these are the Formula One drivers. In, mm -hmm. the, end, um, in the end, they're going to take the decision and they're going to be blamed. And uh, they, he can only bring you a certain level uh, if. Uh, everybody cooperates in his vision and uh, uh, the decision was right uh, the man is right uh, I think you could see already the and bringing young players in that's the way to go mm. and uh, this, this freshness you could see in the team uh, a bit unlucky uh, couldn't concentrate that you will also find when the referee took a certain decision they uh, yeah. were too long busy with the referee and start concentrating on his job on the on players uh, job not the, the coach was very calm outside I saw that uh, the players should be concentrating more on the game and could have maybe equalized. Mm. Uh, but I hopefully from that, uh, there's a learn process again. And we have so many learn processes when I look like last 20 years. 
and hopefully now from now on for the next steps uh, South Africa have learned from their mistakes and giving uh, a good possibility to, to a technical team that can bring this team, uh, the talent is there um, to another level from my opinion and who goes the right man. Yeah. Coach, um, you're back in the country, I can say that you're still young for a coach. <laughs> Thing you can still go on for, enough, for, for a number of years to come. You know, people would want to, you know, find out from you what does the future looks like. Are you have you retired from coaching? Are you are you looking? Uh, are you working on something? What's happening with Muslim? No, I'm not looking at the moment. I must say that uh, honestly, uh, Turkey football is very volatile, very aggressive, very so. Actually, Shenol Ganesh, one a friend of mine, one of the. Our legends in Turkish football phoned me two years ago and said, I need help. Uh, I need I need you. Uh, I would love to have you here. Yeah, then I went back to Turkey, back to my home. Uh, mm. Coach Sivaspor there, uh, yeah. one of the top clubs, uh, Trabzonspor. And came back um, together. We had a dream, we, we also didn't go now. Uh, Channel was with the team 2002, we had third in the World Cup in Japan, Korea. And he, uh, we had a dream to be the next next Nana World Cup. Now after 20 years, wanted to bring it in and went very well. So, but Turkish football is really it's it's tiring and uh, it's it's a lot of challenges what you have. Yeah. You have 65, what is it, 86 million uh, uh, coaches there, and uh, so it was a bit challenging. And we are tired. I'm tired at the moment and just want to mm. refresh my batteries. Uh, we also all over Europe was traveling a lot. Uh, performance analyst looking into yeah. the world football, uh, was corresponding, was looking at what is actually world football is happening at the moment, where the football is proceeding to, uh, use development structures uh, and did a lot of, lot of um, analysis and uh, discussions and presentations and uh, tactical formats mm. and um, individual parts of, of uh, so and also, I gained a lot from I say that myself. Yeah. I learned a lot myself. Uh, uh, we never stop learning, so this is the nice, nice part of it. Hopefully, from January on, uh, we look into. There are already uh, some interests has shown. Uh, January, maybe we'll see. Today, at the moment, back in Cape Town and uh, relaxing with my family, mm. and hopefully, then soon, a nice project. Not something to, to save or something, a nice project that you can build on, uh, that would interest me. Yeah. Mm. And uh, you know, also as we st start wrapping up now, you, you are here, so you watch lots of South African football. What's, 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 your, what's, your, what's your general impression of South African football, where it is now? Are we, you know, is, do, do you watch some good games? Are they, uh, the players, are, they, are the players improving? What's, what's your feel when you watch South African football right now? Yeah, I don't know if the internet has helped uh, coaches. Obviously, education, education factor self. We discussed that in Europe as well. Uh, always this transition game. Everybody is trans transitioned. Yeah, 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 all, yeah. All everybody is in transition. It's transition now, yeah. You know, the, the life is in transition at the moment. Yeah. Everywhere when you go, and uh, so Germany also use uh, was also all those years in transition, and you don't have any international strikers anymore, world class strikers. What Germany had. Along the history, mm. no more. All transition players want to face the goal, want to take on, want to go in the, in the box, but there's no more. There's only one in Bayern Munich at the moment. He's a world class striker. He should have get the Ballon d'Or. But uh, there's no only one. He scores left, right, and center. And this is Bayern Munich, there where Bayern Munich is at the moment, because of one player, actually. Mm. Everybody plays, not ah. because of one player. Everybody plays beautiful football, transfer the, the, the transition to the box, but there's one guy in the box. Of uh, course. The point for me is that it's been taken too much into use factors, that the transition, transition game has been played in the use factors too much. Mm. So we need to look into developing strikers that have never been since, since all those years, 90s, uh, remember those great sky strikers that South Africa had on those years and played all over. Yeah. Uh, and they're not anymore. Uh, the last one was pr pr practically here in the box uh, in South Africa, an outsider, Collins Besuma, who scored 25 and is still yeah. not broken, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you need to produce your individual part of play uh, players, that are great wingers again who play international level of wing, uh, wing play. 
uh, centre backs today. They are uh, centre backs are players that build the game today from the back. Mm -hmm. There's like playmakers from the back at the moment. This is unbelievable. Uh, the midfielders are, are, are those ones transition players that the ones who are gonna link up uh, and the box players and uh, they need we need to produce really strikers for that and uh, Sean Bartlett's uh, at the moment hopefully he will have a success here with Spurs yeah. these are the elements that you had this produced those type of players on those years but we need to look into that maybe a consortium has to come together and former players you have so many on that and get together and try to, to explain what is actually and understand what is actually how can we build South African football to another level what is happening in the youth sections why is not producing and again this for me comes into the point that you're having in South Africa um, primary school suddenly becomes professionals it goes to the university so it means four or five years of proper education comes suddenly they need to go to the university and then they're facing people in Europe or worldwide now, Argentina or Brazil, they're having 10, 12 years of proper education and then goes to the university. Mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a big, big difference. And yeah. that has to be sorted out. Second last question, Coach. Uh, now I'm going to be unfair on you now. On me. <laughs> <laughs> Who is the best player, of course, in South Africa? If you can Please. give me one, at least give me two. Uh, I will give you a lot. <laughs> Uh, Jabupule, for sure. I hope that the boys, when they listen to that, uh, <laughs> uh, they, don't, they don't get angry with me. Still have great contacts uh, with all of them, nearly all of them. Yeah. Uh, Jabupule comes in my mind immediately. A player that I would say Ronaldinho, Echo. Mm. Uh, let me start from goalkeeping. Goalkeeping Ito mm. That's Now you are giving me your, your 11. Uh, uh, maybe before you continue to 11, um, what made Jabu so special? Uh, you know when you when you have when you when you in the game sitting in the game and as a coach you have the tactical aspects every every everything works to your tactical aspect it but it doesn't work now from the it's it's blocked so but the tactical as your your transition from the first transition word again from the first to the second and then you win the ball back eight to ten seconds and open and go but now you need somebody who can unlock that whole thing mm. and. Uh, so we had a put, put in discussion by the FIFA with the TSG group and we were discussing that now we're looking into how many kilometers, how many sprints, how many... But guys, this is beautiful. You don't want actually play the, your team to run so much. You want them to sprint much more. But now, you, how do you going to have Ronaldo pressing all those ways up there? But he needs, when he receives the ball, he needs that, that a bit of uh, air and that, that finesse to unlock a defense. So you need, everybody is now, everyone is organized, everyone is fit, everyone. But you need those players that can unlock a defense with their, with their own brilliance, individual brilliance, that comes, into tuition, that comes from, their, from their skills. Not, not uh, let me say, taught. It comes in his mind immediately because he has that capacity. Mm. And that was Jabu. When I, was, when I looked to the game, I was, it was clo the game was closed. There comes that young boy with the sticks and uh, unlocks the defense with one move and have a proper proper pass to his striker. Mm. When I took him to Austria, I will never forget that. <laughs> yeah, there are lots of stories there. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you, when the chairman saw him, says to me, Musin, are you sure he will, that this one we're going to play in South Africa, uh, in Austria? Because we have here, here, here yeah, yeah. really boys that uh, one meter 19. So don't worry, he will move around them like, uh, like, like they're going to be like uh, trees. <laughs> so yeah, don't yeah. worry about that. He will be... He will unlock anyone. I promise you, he was first 10 weeks uh, together with me, he was six times the player of the week in Austria. Yeah. Uh, it, was, it was amazing. It was people after the game, was, was, had, they had them on the shoulders. Mm. So he was the hero in that time. Unfortunately, what happened is that when yeah. I left. Yeah. But uh, he could have been from there moving then up to, to other levels. Uh, yeah. That could have, could have been happened for him. Yeah. It's a pity. But he was a player that, that really I could I could write books about him. Yeah. Sometimes he comes to me on the sideline and say when when I was worried and then he, he could feel that. Comes, Don't worry, coach, we'll handle that. Yeah. <laughs> so he was such a and he meant he was special, yeah. well, uh, special players that you need to treat them special. I don't believe in as a coach saying everyone has to be treated equal. There's no equal. You can't treat Messi with a with a midfield player. You can't uh, treat there is no no there is no there is everyone is special. 
everyone is a big player. Everyone is there when you when he plays has a certain demand as a coach that you have to give him. Mm. So the, the world has been changed. Yeah. But Itomele Kuni was special. Yeah, that's your that's your um, your team now. Yeah, he yeah, was uh, one of the one of the best African goalkeepers now long years here. Okay, so he's also he's built up uh, brought Reinhard Inkelek on those years here to South Africa. Mm. A great goalkeeper coach from Germany. And uh, I remember him uh, after every training session heading heading these small goals, 60, 70 meter all over, and he was giving hundred balls after every training session on the spot. So that was our that was the transition, the counter attack yeah. we had. Yeah. Yeah. So um, center backs I would say Patrick Mabedi immediately yeah. was one of the quickest players and intelligent players I always had. Uh, also a very good coach, we worked together. Uh, next to him, uh, Ferreira, Eduardo Ferreira from Brazil, which yeah. I brought to, to what a player oh, yes, he was. Yeah. Left wing back, I will definitely say Marco Mutembu. He was so qu he was quicker than the ball already, or sometimes <laughs> he was already gone there. Uh, it's the right side, Cyril Zama, which guys, when say, these, these managers and uh, Cyril was one of the greatest players of Africa ever produced. He needs to give him a, prop a proper time and I, I think I will look after him to work with him soon uh, again. Uh, such a, I don't know how many caps he has for Bafana Bafana. Mm. And he was one of the best South African players that ever produced. So he still needs to get a little bit more involved in a higher level, I think. And this is, uh, this is the sadness of South Africa, yeah. that you don't, you don't look after your assets here. Uh, midfield, uh, I immediately, 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 uh, Iyong Ino mm. was, and he made it internationally, obviously. He asked me last time, said, Coach, what did you see on him? Because he, uh, he was many times, he had tests before he came to me and he was rejected. Mm. I said, what did you see differently? So the quick mind, quick mind that you had. Next to him, I would say, that's a different story now. Clifford Cobini, maybe, Stanton Fredericks, a great player, uh, eight who hangs between the lines. That was an unbelievable player, Stanton. Mm. Kubeka, Trantla Kubeka, which, Unfortunately, injured early. Yeah, Otherwise, yeah. he would have gone internationally. Europe, yeah. For me, unbelievable. He's 19. We won the Africa Cup together with him. Uh, Mandela Cup together. So yeah. uh, it was one of the players that I admired. And unfortunately, I must say that. Number 10, Tabu Yeah. No, no discussion. <laughs> left wing, also left offensive. Obviously, Tabu, uh, Jabu Puli who came in. Yeah. It was that, uh, that lopsided we had played. Uh, right, Atazwane. I think uh, the best best right wing back. He used to go after the training sessions together with uh, Elsa Storm and uh, Adri de Jong. Adri de Jong was preparing for herself for the Olympic Games, and she he he went afternoon sessions uh, with Adri uh, doing the 800 meter runs. Mm. Just imagine we finished the training session. I didn't know that, and he went then there to train with uh, South African top athlete. F preparing for the Olympic Games, uh, did the rhythm tra training session uh, on the afternoon day. And uh, striker, Sebon yeah. yeah, So, But there are uh, Tulani Sereros, there are Dominic Isaacs, uh, there are Brian Baloy, uh, Brad Evans, Bryce Moon. So there are some, some great, great players that I've worked with. I must yeah, say. it will be difficult. They mustn't, difficult. They mustn't be angry with me. I didn't <laughs> put them in the first 11. <laughs> you can't put everybody in, yeah. yeah. Um, coach, my German is not that good. But uh, I know when, they th when you thank somebody in German, yeah. you say Dankeschön. Bitte schön. Gern geschehen. Dankeschön, yes. Um, coach, thank you very much um, for, for, for agreeing to, 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 to speak to us. No, I always say that uh, the purpose of this is to tell the stories. Uh, you know, it's important that we must tell each other stories, you know, and you, you've served our football very well, and uh, we hope that, um, as you say, in January, maybe we'll see you back on the bench. Uh, we miss those, you know, that angry <laughs> elements <laughs> <laughs> on the uh, bench that uh, you always uh, used to do. and uh, Intensity. Yeah, intensity, yes, <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, thank you very much. and. Uh, have a good uh, festive season with you and your family in Cape Town. And uh, it was really a, an, an, an absolute honor to, to have you here on Pram Sports with Matlats. Thank you very much, Coach. I have to thank you. And uh, it was really for me a pleasure to get a, uh, with you guys to be here today. And uh, also for the, for the guys who are behind the cameras and doing all the job. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
obviously, hopefully we have uh, a blessed, a blessed, blessed Christmas this year because it was very difficult, I think, for everyone. And uh, yeah, always great to be back in South Africa. I hope the questions were good. Yeah. I hope the questions were good. Oh no, lovely. <laughs> no, 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 very good. Uh, we could, I mean, we could talk. Uh, we could talk for the whole day, yeah. All day, because in the end, it's it's about. Uh, it's South Africa is going backwards, and I think I have not mixed my words for it. Yeah. Some people will get angry, but there, there, there you have a lot of uh, things that are gonna be now with pirates again. Uh, but this is this is the way how it is. They need to think about about the coach, because yeah. I'm giving because how can you not be allowed to be in a stadium? Yeah, yeah, it's unacceptable. Yeah. yeah. Mm. And the big teams they need to think about themselves. They are not big. Big teams handle big. When you when I called Bayern Munich to be uh, in watching a game, there is the VIP and there is a super VIP only Bayern Munich. So I was invited to the super VIP, VIP is my head coach. So I went in there and the way how they treat you is, is, a, is a unbelievable. You go to Leicester, how they treat you. Either send you a car, they pick you up, bring to the to the to the hotel, bring to the uh, visio, they, they bring they, they hire a car for you from the company. Mm -hmm. You don't need to hire a car. You don't need to. They do that. The clubs do that for you. The coach sit down with you. The chairman. Uh, so I went to Milan. I went to uh, Juventus. I went to Leicester. I went to all all those clubs where our players played. And everybody are the same. Everybody are. And how can your national coach not go into your game? Yeah, no, that was. Uh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> Jesus Christ. And I think that I, 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 it is good to pick it up. Yeah, yeah. No, coach, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Thank you.